I want to say hello to Esther, Abraham, and my inner being. It's good to meet myself again. So I enjoy being physical. A lot of things about physicality I, I do like. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> it's where all the sensual, see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it stuff is. And that's also where you get to witness universal forces converging and congealing for you. Right. These are good times. <laughs> So on my physical path, I made a little bit of resistance to myself, which is okay. Which is perfectly normal, and otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yes. I want to talk about, I understand that I sift through the contrast of life, and I choose my preferences on what I want. Can't but, help it, can you? What's that? Can't help it. I cannot. But I feel like I understand that I just make my preference, and I let the universe bring it to me. Yeah, if you're smart. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem. Get out of your own way. Mind your own business, which isn't your business. So I, I just want to talk about how, you know, I let the universe bring it to me versus feel like I have to physically make it happen. Well, it's fun when you're feeling really good to think about what you want and why you want it and to imagine it coming about because that way you are bringing pleasure to yourself in your now as you think about things that are important to you and the more detailed that you become when you're feeling good then not only the more fun it is but the faster the energy moves and the more hands-on feeling you have the more your own hands in your own clay but if you're really actually worried about it or only hoping for it and there's still doubt laced in your vibration then the more you talk about it the more you shoot yourself in your own foot because you're actually contributing to the vibration that exists rather than the vibration that you're reaching for the best way to understand that is every subject really is like a stick with two ends on it and one end of it is what you want and the other end of it is the absence of what you want for example if you're thinking about more money we bring that up often because it's a common intention among most humans so as you're wanting more money and you're thinking about more money but it makes you feel worried or it makes you feel envious or it makes you feel angry or it makes you feel blameful then the more you're thinking about it the more you are not working for your own cause it's the conversation that we just had with our friend about still be beating the drum of the problem rather than being in vibrational sync with the solution yeah so I guess that in my physical life sometimes I feel like it's almost cheating like I can't just let the universe bring it to me you know pet my dog and well, that's like... a belief that you would do well to work your way out of because that belief says I'm not worthy and I have to earn through my hard work and action and what the laws of the universe are saying is line up with it and it is yours yeah. in other words it is as simple as tuning your radio dial to the station that you want to hear Esther and her friend were coming from the airport and a driver really a nice guy having such a good time he was enjoying the beautiful day on Friday afternoon when they flew in and he said to them do you have Bluetooth on your phone and Esther said yes can I be the DJ and so he tried to set his radio so that Esther's Bluetooth could hook into it so that she could play the songs on her phone but the screen said cannot happen while vehicle is moving he pulled off on the side of the road to make it possible for Esther to play her music through the phone it was exhilarating to watch technology line up with what Esther was choosing so she'd play a song until everyone had received the high from it and then she'd play another one she didn't play a whole song all the way through she just kept playing a song until it got to the best part and then she'd play another song until it got to the best part and then she'd play another song until it got to the best part and many of the songs she was playing he had never heard before she couldn't believe it how can you not know all of my favorite songs <laughs> they didn't want to get out of the car he said can we just drive around for a while they came to the hotel and they all said oh oh <laughs> of course the point that we're making is that when you set your radio dial what's there is there and there is no one that comes on and says you haven't suffered long enough listen to more songs you don't like you have to listen to 10 songs you don't like there must be a song struggle and then we'll give you a little bit of the song that you like to hear 
That's There's a, nothing yeah. like that. Just line up with what you want and the universe delivers, not only delivers it to you quickly, but delivers it to you through the path of least resistance. That is the most satisfying path that you've ever experienced. Good thing after good thing, after good thing, after good thing, after good thing coming to you because you deserve good things. Where do you get this stuff? Who has pinched you off from your sense of worthiness? Someone with shortage consciousness about the good stuff. Someone who thinks that the pie is only this big. And if you get too much of it, you'll deprive them of it. Sure. And we say, do you ever say, oh, I've been well for so long and all those sick people. I think I'll be sick for a while. I'll be sick for the month of June to allow more people who ordinarily would be sick to be well. You don't say that. Because you know that you're not depriving anyone of wellness and you're not deprived by being well and you're not depriving anybody of clarity by being clear minded. You're not depriving anyone of anything by tuning in, you see. But there are those who don't know that, who convinced you that you should not be selfish. They accuse us, Abraham, you teach selfishness. We say, guilty as charged. <laughs> we do. If you're not selfish enough to care about how you feel, then you're not going to tune into the resources that are already earmarked for you. You should see your vortex. If you want to feel worthy, if you want to know, oh, we would like so much if you could peer into this vortex and understand all the good stuff that you've put there since you were born into this body. And even before how it's all there encoded with the vibrational DNA of that, which is you all queued up for you, just waiting for you to get into that sweet spot so that you can lean forward and not get conked on the head with something. Yeah to get in that sweet spot where you have the sensation of what to do and when to do it. That's actually perfect. And I'm going to use that. My other question is, so, you know, I believe that, oh, I've heard that earth is like a master class because as infinite intelligence, we chose to come to earth knowing that we were going to forget who we actually were in order to remind ourselves and, and work our way back towards that. Part of what you're saying is true in that you don't remember before because you don't need the clutter of all of that because from the lives that you lived before, you've created a vortex that always remembers. And when you get in sync with who you are, you always remember. Do you want to have all of the conversations that you've ever had in this lifetime today with us? Would that even be possible? Would you like to try to cram that in to this poignant moment in time? Or is it enough that you've had them, you've evolved, you've become, and now here you are having this conversation. And so of course, all that you've ever been before is active and vibrant. When you reemerge into non-physical, you leave behind all doubt and fear and you take with you all that you are. That's who you are, you see. And now all you must do, all you have to do is just find vibrational sync with that. And everything that is important for you to remember about who you are is there. It is enough from all that you've lived to remember that you're worthy. So when you call earth a master class, we take issue with it in this sense. You have not been sent here to learn and you've not been sent here to redeem and you've not been sent here for any reason. You've come for the joy of expansion. That's all you've come for the joy, the never ending expansion. You've come for the joyous never ending expansion. You haven't come to remember what you've forgotten. You've come to sync up with what you know, but that's far different than being demanded to remember what you've forgotten. Can you feel the difference when you sync up with who you are? Our friend, how do you think she knew that the grate from the ceiling was going to fall? Is that something that she needed to remember? Oh, I have to remember. I have to remember everything that fell on me in every past life. <laughs> what were the circumstances? I must remember. Where was I? Did I have the spear or did he have the spear? Who had the spear? <laughs> who set who on fire? I don't remember how it went. Did I fall in the big hole or did a tree fall on me? I can't remember. I can't remember these things. It's not like that at all. You get tuned in, tapped in, turned on and in your powerful now and your inner being knows where you stand in relationship to all else and gives you guidance. You see, it's not a master class. It's a master tuning, a master aligning. It's being the master. It's having the enlightenment. It's being in sync with that knowing you see. That's awesome. I just have one last thing. If Abraham wants to add anything, one of my favorite sayings I've heard is that circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. And I want to see if Abraham had anything to add to that statement. Instead of the word circumstances, 
we like to use the word conditions because you have a human phrase that you use quite often but you sort of misunderstand it when you talk about unconditional love so we would say unconditional alignment or uncircumstantial alignment unconditional meaning that you can find alignment regardless of the condition but if you let the condition occupy your thinking then the condition it might be a wonderful condition and it might cause you to soar but it might be an awful condition and it might cause you to vibrationally plummet and if you develop patterns of focusing on things and then having reactionary responses you don't have control over your alignment you see what we're getting at if you need things to be good and when they are you feel good now you are looking around at conditions and you're gonna find those that don't feel good too but if you've mastered the understanding that you can feel as good as you have chosen to feel it takes a little practice but as you show yourself that you can feel good regardless of the condition now in your alignment the condition must change very important point thank you your questions could not have been more exhilarating to us oh, and together you. we have put it into vernacular that has taken thought and word beyond that which it has been before and our appreciation is deep thank you yes.